Hi, fellow believers in Christ. Um, are you alone on the holidays? <laughs> well, actually, you're really not. And even if you don't know Jesus, you're still not alone on the holidays <laughs> um, because he's always there with you. Even if you don't love Jesus and you don't follow him, he's really been following you your entire life. He's been watching you, in a lot of cases, watching over you. Um, sending help even when you don't you didn't think he was there and you didn't see and in your darkest moments when people attacked you and hurt you he prevented things from getting worse a lot of times he prevented you from actually losing your life um, and he he protected you in many ways that you you didn't realize I'll tell you an interesting story um, about this would be over 15 years ago um, I, I, I was married at the time and it was really um, abusive situation and I always felt alone all the time and I happened to be home home alone one day and um, I went out on the the front porch or the front deck actually and um, there was always a lot of um, uh, what are they called yellow jackets on the deck at summertime and anyway, somehow one of them got up my shirt sleeve and started stinging my arm inside my shirt sleeve. And I knew it was a yellow jacket because they were out there all the time. And uh, and I, I'm not allergic to bees, uh, so I wasn't in fear of losing my life. But I, in general, I'm afraid of bugs and having a bug up my sleeve would disturb me enough as it is but for that bug to be attacking me and biting me repeatedly or actually stinging me repeatedly because yellow jackets they sting you over and over they don't stop they don't just sting you once they keep stinging you and um so i knew i had to get my shirt off um and and so i went straight into the house when it, when i felt the first sting i went straight into the house and I just dropped to my knees because I was at, at, at the same time that I was in pain, I was also horrified at the idea of not only having a bug up my sleeve, but having to get rid of the bug somehow without it. it I'm, I'm so bug phobic that the more places a bug touches me, the more grossed out and afraid I become. And so I knew that I had to take my shirt off, but even if I took my shirt off, that could cause the, the yellow jack jacket to smear around other parts of my body. And when I was pulling my sleeve off, it could even touch my hand, which would really gross me out. If a bug touches my hand, I get so grossed out. And so it's just, to me, it's, it's like a horror movie, you know, me and bugs. And um, I just hate them so much. And so I knew I had to get my shirt off, but I also, that would mean the bug touching more parts of my body and maybe even my hand. I didn't know how I could emotionally handle that. And so I was a Christian, but I wasn't really uh, following Jesus. I wasn't a born again Christian. I had a lot of demons in my life and I was suffering from a lot of emotional pain at the time. And um, I didn't really have a friend on the planet because um, no one understood me. Um, you know, after I became a born again Christian, then my relationships started healing. The old relationships ended and new relationships began to form, including in my family. Um, old relationships ended and new relationships formed, even with the same people in some cases. Uh, but with my other friends, I pretty much lost all of them. Um, I had lost all of them, but, but, but then the Lord brought me new friends. But anyhow, so at the time, I didn't really have anybody who understood it, me or who I thought cared about me at all. Nobody acted like they did. <laughs> um, and, or, or at least I just couldn't experience it. Well, anyhow, um, so I've, I've dropped to my knees and I started screaming, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. And I think I said it three times, three or four times. And I just kept saying, and, and I remember also, I said something like Jesus saved me, something to the effect of Jesus saved me. Now I thought I was already saved spiritually because all the pastors said I was, <laughs> but, but I, you know, I really wasn't, but, but, you know, I, I went to church and they told me I was a Christian and, um, 
and, and I was, but I wasn't born again. But anyway, but what I meant was save me from this bug, basically. Get this bug away from me. But I didn't really believe Jesus would do it. See, that was the thing. Before I became born again, I didn't really believe down in the core of my being that God really cared about me. And I thought that anything good that happened to me was kind of like chance. And, 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 and most of the things that happened to me were bad and, or, or I interpreted them as bad, but a lot of really terrible stuff did happen to me, but it never dawned, it never occurred to me for a microsecond that Jesus would actually get rid of that bug. But what happened was after when I was done screaming, and, and I'm not the emotional or dramatic type. I don't normally scream. But the reason I screamed was because no one was home. So no one would know that I was in desperate need and that I'm just being emotional. I don't like to be emotional in front of people. But since no one was home, I had the liberty to just let it go, you know, let it all out. And so that's why I was screaming. If I was in public, I wouldn't have made a sound. You know what I mean? Or if, or if anyone who knew me was around, I wouldn't have said a word. But, but I was screaming, never thinking that I would get an answer to prayer. Well, anyway, what happened was when I was done screaming, I realized that I couldn't see, 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 it was like my sleeve was like this and I could see, I could feel the bug stinging me, but I could also look at my arm and I could see the sleeve going up and down where the bug was, where the bug was stinging. I could see the bug under my sleeve, you know, the, the, um, you know, the bump it was making under my sleeve and the bump was going up and down as it was stinging me. You know, as it was putting its finger in and out. Well, when I got done screaming, I didn't see the bug anymore. I didn't see the bump where the bug was. And I was thinking, well, that's interesting. At least it stopped. And then, then I had to take a deep breath and gather all my courage to pull my shirt off and hope that the bug wouldn't smear down my arm or touch my arm, you know, as it was coming off or fly up into my hair or into my face. So I kind of just took a deep breath and with all the courage I had left, I pulled my shirt off and I started looking for the bug and I start looking everywhere for the bug. There's nobody at home so I could take my shirt off. And I'm looking everywhere. I'm, I looked at the inside of the shirt, the outside of the shirt. I turned it inside, outside, inside, outside. I looked inside the sleeves. I pulled the sleeves out of where they were supposed to be. And I was like, where is this bug? I looked all over like this. I looked all over and I'm like, did it fly somewhere? And I didn't see it. And I know wasps usually go straight to the window. Any flying insect will always instinctively go straight to the window. So I went to windows looking for this thing. Oh, where is it? I looked all over. I looked in every part of the window that it could possibly be. I listened for it. Couldn't hear a thing. And then, strangely, I noticed, I looked at my arm, and there was no swelling, no redness. Now, even though I'm not allergic to bee stings or wasp stings, that doesn't mean that they don't hurt or that you don't have swelling or redness. I've been stung by bees several times in my life, and there's always swelling and redness, and you can usually see the little hole where the stinger was, and if it's a bee, the stinger will still be there. Well, I didn't expect to see the stinger necessarily because it was a wasp, but um, but there was no stinger, no holes, <laughs> no bump, no swelling, I, and I kept looking at my arm, and I'm like, this is so weird. <clears throat> I don't even see where the bug hurt me. So I rubbed where the bug had stung me and that and even when I rubbed it it didn't hurt and I'm like this is so weird. I spent over 20 minutes <laughs> trying to figure it out, going through the whole house looking for the bug, turning my shirt every single way you can possibly turn a shirt and then doing it again trying to find the bug in my shirt. I looked all over my body in the mirror before I put another shirt on. I'm like, it's got to be somewhere. It has to be somewhere. I looked everywhere. I looked, I, I even looked in the laundry. I mean, I looked in so many places and I thought and I thought and I thought and I thought. I kept rubbing the sore, you know, the, what should have been a sore and it was nothing. There was no sign, no evidence whatsoever that I, a bug had stung me. I just couldn't figure it out. And I was so, I, I was thinking, am I crazy? 
no, I can't be crazy because I felt it. And I know what a wasp feels like when they sting you. I've been stung before. I saw the bump going up and down. No, I can't be crazy, but I must be crazy because there's no bug. There's nothing here. So I was like going on and on like for over 20 minutes. And finally, I couldn't solve the minis- the mystery. So I <laughs> finally had to just forget about it and move on and just go, I don't, I don't know what that was, but I'm just going to forget about it and move on with my life. So, so, you know, hours, I never told anybody because I didn't think anybody would care. (laughs) So I never shared it with anyone, but you know, the weeks and the days and the months went on and the years went on and, and I just never thought about it again because it was too, it was too bizarre. So I just forgot about it. And so then all those years went by and uh, I think it was like a couple of years ago or one year ago, I was sitting in a church or I was praying or something. I don't remember where I was, but all of a sudden the Lord brought back that memory (laughs) and he distinctly said, remember when I answered your prayer that one day? And, um, and I, and I was like, oh, I can't believe it. That was a miracle. So you disintegrated that bug. You made that bug evaporate. And you not only made the bug evaporate so that I wouldn't have to touch it. I wouldn't have to see it. I wouldn't have to deal with it. You see, God is such a gentleman. He didn't just make it stop stinging me. He didn't just get my wound to heal. He went so much further. Not only did he make the bug stop stinging me, he, he healed my wound instantly so that there was no sign of it whatsoever. No, not even the little hole where the stinger was. And on top of that, he's such a gentleman and so kind that he didn't make me have to touch a bug or find a bug or get a bug out of my house or have the bug roll on, roll down my hand or have the bug fly up into my hair. I didn't have to deal with any of that stuff. I didn't even have to see the bug on the windowsill, which that wouldn't have bothered me too much. But, and and this is what's really amazing about it is because I know, um, I've known for many years and I knew back then that wasps are very easy to get out of your house and so are bees. Wasps and bees specifically. All you do is you take a piece of white paper, preferably a large one, not not a flashcard. (laughs) <laughs> but a big piece of white paper, you go to, they always go to the window. So you go to the window and you put the paper next to the bug. The bug will crawl onto it and it will stay on the white paper until you carefully carry it outside. And then you can just shake the paper and the bug flies away. No big deal. Every wasp or bee I have ever encountered has always climbed onto the white paper and stayed on the white paper until I got it outside. I've never had any trouble getting rid of wasps and bees. Even though I'm grossed out by bugs, generally speaking, I don't have any trouble doing that. But he even saved me from doing that. (laughs) He could have let the bug go to the window because I wouldn't have had much of a problem at all. I would have had any problem getting rid of it once it went to the window. I just didn't want to touch it, you know? So he saved me from all that. And he saved me. It's just, I I just could go on and on for hours about how amazing this is. And on top of all that, I didn't even recognize him as doing it. I didn't recognize it as a miracle. See, the reason I couldn't solve the mystery was because I couldn't believe that God cared that much about me. And that he would actually answer my prayer in the moment I was praying it. That was why I could never figure it out. Because I never thought the possibility that Jesus was actually answering my prayer. I didn't, I didn't think that was possible. And so that's why I was so dumbfounded. And I questioned if I had gone crazy. <laughs> I never went crazy. I just was in complete spiritual doubt. I was living my whole life that way. Well, anyway, that was that, that happened. Things like that happen to a lot of us. There's been many times where Jesus has saved you, even when you went through terrible stuff. He saved you from far, far worse that could have happened. Even when you did not call out on His name, 
he still preserved your life. He preserved you from worse things. And I can look back on my own life and there's many times where horrific things happened to me, what I thought was horrific, but it could have been a lot, 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 lot worse. So much worse. And I know for a fact that God protected me to a certain extent, even when I didn't acknowledge it or ask for it or anything. And in this case, it was a very dramatic miracle. And it, it was over 15 years before I finally realized that that was a miracle. <laughs> um, you know, later on when I'm born again, and then the Lord reminded me and I'm like, oh, so you answer every single time we call, even if we don't believe you, <laughs> you always answer. And, and on top of that, um, he's just always there anyway. He, he won't let you suffer anything that's so great that you could never turn back to the Lord. Now, a lot of us have been through some really horrible stuff, but we haven't suffered anything that was so great that he would lose us forever. If he lost us, it was our choice. It wasn't because he let us go through something that could never um, be rectified or that we could never uh, get healed from. I have been healed from all the terrible things I've been through. Um, so, but anyway, you know, before I was born again, I was lonely. Loneliness was a demon that I always had all the time. So holidays were really hard for me because I never felt loved. Even if I was with people on a holiday, I didn't feel that they cared about me. I just felt like I'm just here because, you know, they want to they want to feel that they've <laughs> let let the reject in or something you know and i never felt like um i was actually i actually belonged to anyone and so and and then a lot of times you know you're with hol on holidays you're with kind of weird people sometimes so it just kind of spoils it anyway and you can't really enjoy yourself because the people you're with are a little bit off <laughs> So, so I never liked holidays. And then there were many holidays where I was just alone, just flat out alone. And I, and I felt so bad, but now that I'm born again, I love being alone on the holidays. I actually love it because I, I learned something when I became born again. I learned that I've, that not only am I never alone now, I've actually never been alone my entire life. <laughs> I thought I was, but I never was. Jesus was always there. He saw everything I went through. He saw everything that people did to me. He saw every lie. He, he heard every lie that Satan spoke to me. I was never alone, never alone. And he suffered with me through so many things. And, and all the time that I believed I was alone, he was right there with me, suffering with me, um, sometimes rejoicing with me, talking to me, telling me things. Um, I also quickly, I'll tell you this one thing. I remember during the same time in my life, um, I would take walks um, and I would tell Jesus, I would tell God all my complaints. Why do you make me go through this? Why do you make me go through that? Why, did, why does the world treat me this way? Why do I have to suffer all these things? And every single question he answered. <laughs> now, it wasn't the answers I was looking for. It wasn't the answer I wanted because his answer was all often, that's how you treat me. <laughs> and he wasn't saying, I'm punishing you for how you treat me. He was just saying, can't you understand the way the world makes you feel is how you make me feel <laughs> about our relationship all the abandonment and the betrayal that you experience from other human beings, you've done it all to me. And it wasn't, he, he wasn't trying to get my pity. He wasn't trying to tell me he was angry at me. He was just trying to open my eyes and say, why don't you work on, on us? <laughs> you know, that's what he was trying to say, because I was always praying, can you fix my relationships with so-and-sos? And he was saying, why don't you work on us? us is what what I'm most concerned with and so he answered every single question he always had an immediate answer every time I, I lamented and I complained he immediately responded and that was when my prayers were hateful <laughs> very hateful prayers 
And yet he immediately, he was fully in the conversation the whole time. There wasn't one time that I prayed and I didn't get immediate responses from him. It just wasn't what I wanted to hear. <laughs> so it's amazing how engaged he is, even when we don't want to have a relationship with him. But now as a born again Christian, I call it, I think of it when I'm alone, I think of it as being on a date with Jesus. It's a date. And I've been on several amazing dates with Jesus that are just amazing. He's taken me places like there's been a couple of times where I've gotten in the in the in my truck or car, you know, me and my dog. Um, and we just go on a date with Jesus. Now we haven't done that in a while, but we have dates right here in our apartment. <laughs> you know, I don't travel that much anymore. But um, but I Jesus has he is so engaging and so much fun to be around and he loves me he he loves you he 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 delights in you if you're his child he delights in you and if you're not his child he still loves you passionately and he'll do anything um to um to win you back and to save you and to protect you and he's watching you all the time he's he's always watching over you and um he inter he intervenes in your life even when you don't ask him to and you don't give him any credit for it. He has intervened. Um, but as a born again Christian, you can ha have a whole lot of fun with Jesus. <laughs> There's no such thing as being alone on the holidays. There's just no such thing. It doesn't exist. Um, and now I can see I was never alone. But but now as a born again Christian, um, I have so much fun with Jesus. He, he's so much fun. You know, um, when you're at work too, Jesus goes to work with me. He, he tells me how to do my job better. I say, you know, Lord, I don't know how to do this. Can you give me a clue? And he does. He gives me a clue. I've learned many things on the job with Jesus as my supervisor and personal trainer. Um, I've learned, he teaches me everything I need to know, whether I'm at home or at work or, or at church or wherever I am, he teaches me anything I need to know. Um, it, or his spirit, you know, teaches me anything I need to know. And he shares intimate details about himself with me. The more that I draw near to him, the more do I, that I pray to him, he tells me things about himself that aren't in the Bible. He reveals things about himself that you can't really read in the Bible or that are in the Bible, but you just can't get it with your brain until he speaks it into you. You'll never get it. And then you, but once he speaks it into you, you go back in the verse. Oh yeah, that verse does say that, you know? Um, but he's told me special things that really aren't in the Bible. Um, and it isn't like, you, you know, you have to know what he told me. You don't because he'll tell you special things too that he, he hasn't told me. He has a special, unique relationship with each and every one of us. You know, you know how when you have a best friend, um, that best friend shares things with you that they won't share with other people. Well, that's how it is with Jesus Christ too. He will share things specifically with you in your in in the unique relationship that you have with him that he doesn't share with other people. But likewise. He's telling them things that he doesn't share with you necessarily. It's because he shares a little bit of himself with each of us. And that's partly why the why Paul said we all know in part, because uh, we've all had these different experiences with the Lord. And when you put all the experiences together, you can get a bigger picture of it all. That's why I love listening to other people's testimonies and dreams and visions, because I'm getting a part of Jesus that I didn't get from him directly, but what he told me was a little something special. And then he'll tell all these other people a little something special. So I like to hear it all. You know, I want to hear all the experiences that people have had with him because then it's, it's more, you know, uh, putting our parts together. You get a bigger, you get a bigger picture of who he is. Um, but he will um, have specific conversations with you that he won't have with anybody else. And he'll do specific, amazing things for you and with you that he won't do with anybody else. There's been times where people brought me gifts and I knew for absolute fact it, the gift was from Jesus, but he, he used somebody else to, to get it to me, you know, but I knew with all my heart, those gifts were from Jesus that specifically 
he assigned those people to do those things for me or to give me those things. And, and he, he just, he, he isn't any different. It, he, he doesn't, the, the Bible says that God is not a respecter of persons. You know what that literally means? That literally means that he does not play favorites. So if I can have a delightful, unique relationship with him, so can you, because he does not play favorites. I am not his favorite. But I was watching this one man's uh, video the other day, and I wish I could tell you what his name was. Um, he, he has a ministry on the East Coast, and I don't have his name. His name is Rob Wood, Rob Wood or Rob Woods. You could look up his videos on YouTube. And he said that God is our biggest fan. <laughs> and that sounds um, blasphemous you know, because why should God be our fan? It's supposed to be the other way around. But, you know, in a certain way, it's actually true. He is our biggest fan. Just like you're the biggest fan of your of your own child. You know, you delight so much in your child. They make you, just looking at it makes you smile. You know, if you see a little toddler, even if you don't know the toddler, you'll smile. But if that's your toddler, oh boy, you're really going to smile. You know, and that's how God feels about us. He's, he's, he is our biggest fan in that sense, even though he's the one who deserves all the worship. He doesn't worship us, but but he is our biggest fan. He he just um, he's watching us all the time, and he gets such a kick out of out of us in so many ways. And he delights to have a conversation with us and to hold us and care for us. He delights to come to our rescue when we need him, and. I just wanted to tell you, you are absolutely not alone. Even if you want to be alone, you're not alone. The other, the, the downside of it, of it is if you don't, if you are not his child, um, you're not alone in respect to demons and the devil as well. You know, the demons are always there. The devil is always going to try to tempt you. So if you're engaging in sin, you're not alone either because demons, you cannot commit a sin without the participation of demons. Why is that? Because they get pleasure from your sin. So you're never alone when you're sinning. If, if you're doing anything evil, believe me, there is a demon in your presence enjoying that and feeding off of it. And, and in a lot of times enticing you into it. So you're not alone when you sin either. So just remember that. And hopefully that'll creep you out enough to get you to stop sinning. Um, but I just want you to know there's no such thing as being alone. That's a satanic lie. There's no such thing. There's somebody always with you. But but the one person who's with you in every situation is Jesus. Because demons don't like to be with you, generally speaking. If you're in prayer, if you're worshiping God, and if you're refusing to sin, you're no fun for demons. So they'll abandon you in those moments. But God never will. He doesn't abandon you when you're being attacked. He doesn't abandon you when you're in temptation, when you're being tempted. He doesn't abandon you when every other person already has. He doesn't abandon you when you stop believing in him or when you hate him or when you complain against him. He never leaves you. So um, you're not alone for the holidays. <laughs> it isn't even possible. So just enjoy your enjoy. Jesus. Enjoy him and have a good time with him. He ha be on, be, have a great time on a date with him. Um, he's, he's a wonderful person to share experiences with and he will take you places and he will make you laugh. He's made me laugh before. I've had some good chuckles with Jesus <laughs> and he will do the same thing with you. He'll lift your spirits. He'll put a song in your heart. Um, and he will put his arms around you and let you know how much you are loved. And I have actually felt his physical pre presence a few times in my life, um, which I never thought would happen in the past. You know, before I was a born again Christian, I never thought I would feel the presence of God. I thought that was impossible. But it's actually happened. And I'm not the touchy feely type. I'm not one of those, you know, um, <laughs> what one friend used to call holy rollers, you know. <laughs> I'm not like a holy roller type where everything is goosebumps. You know what I mean? 
Um, I'm not like that, but I, even I, even I, as a, as a very stiff person who can't even dance, um, and doesn't, and, and it took years for me to be able to raise my hand in church, you know, during prayer, during worship or prayer. I mean, I had to practice for years to get to the point where I could lift my hand up because I'm such a, how, how do you put it? Um, how do you put it? Stick in the mud. It's just, um, but anyway, um, but even I have had to have physically felt his presence being the <laughs> stick in the mud that I am. Um, so anyway, he, he's really there. He, he just really loves you. I just want you to know you cannot be alone. You can be with demons or you can be with Jesus, but you can't be alone. And the more you draw to near to Jesus and the more you enjoy his company and, um, and cling to him and acknowledge him in your life, um, the more those demons will go away. And acknowledging Jesus is this simple. Say, Jesus, thank you for being with me right now. But if you're going to shop, say, Jesus, please go shopping with me. Um, I, I want your company and I want you to be by my side. I want you to hold my hand while I'm shopping. If you're going to work, say, Jesus, go to work with me. If, if you're, if, um, you know, you're concerned about your vehicle, say, Jesus, fix my vehicle, make it, make it operate properly. Just ask him for everything. He, he loves to be asked for things. He loves to be acknowledged and honored. If you're, if you're, um, you know, um, about ready to have a job interview, then say, Jesus, be with me at this job interview and, you know, make it, make your will happen in my life and acknowledge him in your every steps. He will keep your path straight. Um, and you and him will really grow. Um, before I became born again, one of the big problems I had with God was simply that out of ignorance, I never acknowledged him in any area of my life. I didn't believe he was there. And out of sheer ignorance, I lost out on so many blessings and so many good experiences that could have happened. And it just can't be boring with Jesus. You cannot be bored. <laughs> um, it's impossible. And um, you cannot be alone. You cannot be forgotten. Um, he really loves you. Um, I was going to tell you another little story, but I, I think I forgot what it was. Um, oh, I've told this story before, but it's a, just a good example. So I said, Jesus, as I was driving to the mall, back in the olden days when malls were open, I said, Jesus, will you please go shopping with me today? And it was just that simple prayer, but I really believed he would. Well, when I went into the mall, the very first thing I saw, it was this beautiful white. And of course, Jesus would pick white because white means righteousness. But it was a beautiful top and bottom, top, a top and skirt. It was just beautiful. And it was, it was, it was all white. And it was a, Spanish style, which is very interesting because I'm Spanish. I, um, I'm part Spanish. So my dad's family actually came from Spain originally, and then they went to Mexico and then he, he ended up in Arizona, but, but I actually do have Spanish blood in me. So it was a Spanish style. Um, it was really cute. And that was the very first thing I saw. And I knew Jesus had picked it out for me. So I ended up buying it. But when I took it to the counter, I didn't feel like I could afford the skirt because the skirt was $20 and I didn't really have, you know, that extra money. So I put it on the counter. I wanted to get some other clothes too. And I thought, you know, since I'm not comfortable wearing dresses anyway, maybe I shouldn't get the skirt. Um, so I told, I put it on the counter and I told the guy, you know, I'm probably not going to get the skirt. And he goes, well, actually, I have a coupon right here. And if you get the skirt, it'll cost you a few cents less than if you don't get the skirt. But if you don't get the skirt, it'll cost you a few cents more. And he explained to me it was because he said, you've got approximately $40 worth of clothes. And this coupon says that if you buy it, spend at least $40, you can get $20 off, which means essentially that that skirt would be free minus a few more cents. But if you refuse the coupon and you refuse the skirt, you're still going to pay the same price, which is approximately $20, but without the skirt. So you could either get the skirt 
for a little bit less than $20 and the other clothes, or you cannot get the skirt and pay the full $20. <laughs> so, so, so this is it. Isn't this great? Jesus not only honored my request to go shopping with me, but he picked the outfit out, which I didn't expect him to do. And then he paid for it. <laughs> See how he goes the extra mile? You know, just like with that bug, he didn't even make me have to go to the window with a piece of paper and get it off the window, <laughs> let alone everything else that I was actually afraid of. All I wanted was Jesus' company when I went shopping. I had, I, it never dawned on me that he would pick the dress out and then pay for it. I didn't ask him to do that. I only asked for his company. But he goes the extra mile because he's the God of abundance. He, he's the God who, who produced so many fishes and loaves that there was baskets and baskets left over. Okay? Um, he's the God that when they, they drew the, they had so many fish, when he told them to put the, the net on one side of the boat, there were so many fish they could barely get the net out of the water. That's the God who he is. He always goes overboard because he, he loves you because he's a king. And he lavishes gifts that are worthy of princes and princesses who belong to him. And he, he's no poverty-stricken miser, you know, or, or a miser who's a penny pincher. He ain't no penny pincher God. <laughs> anyway, um, I just wanted you to know how much you're loved. And happy holidays, if that's what you say. Or Merry Christmas, Thanksgiving. Or if you don't celebrate the holidays, then that's beautiful too. Um, just every day is blessed in Jesus Christ. Um, and you are, you are loved. You are blessed. You're never alone. He's there with you all the time. So enjoy all your dates with Jesus. Um, relish them. And he will too. <laughs>